Hello, my name is Jenna Goddard, and I'm the Writing Centre Coordinator at Thompson Rivers University. Today, I'm going to introduce you to what writing looks like in an academic context. First, I'd like to acknowledge that Thompson Rivers University is situated on the traditional lands of the Tecumlips to Chiquetmec within Chiquetmecoulou. I always like to start with a bit of a self-introduction before I start a presentation. So again, my name is Jenna Goddard. I'm the Writing Centre Coordinator, and I also teach student success courses at TRU, where I've been teaching for about 12 years. And I love anything to do with the outdoors, particularly mountain biking and mountaineering. Today, I'm going to start off by sharing some of the academic support for students when it comes to academic writing. I'll touch on writing as a cultural construct, and I'll introduce the academic writing process, starting with assignment interpretation, determining purpose, and moving to structure. And then I'll share some academic writing tips, so the do's and don'ts when it comes to writing, as well as some writing resources available to you. When it comes to academic supports for your writing, the TRU Library is a fabulous resource. You have a discipline-specific librarian who can help you find resources and cite your sources appropriately. I'll chat a little bit more about the Writing Center and our services in the next couple of slides. The Language Learning Center is also a great resource if your first language is not English. And you can always take Student Success 1070, which is a one credit first year elective and we talk about academic writing and citing your sources as well. You can connect with an academic integrity learning strategist to find out a little bit more about avoiding academic integrity issues and citing your sources appropriately. And finally, you should always be connecting with your instructor. And sometimes I chat with first year students and they seem to be really hesitant to chat with their instructor, but they are your best resource and you should always go to them with your questions first. When it comes to Writing Center services, we are a free service and we are staffed by undergraduate and graduate students, as well as community volunteers and some TRU faculty and staff. In fall 2020, we are offering virtual synchronous and asynchronous appointments. So that means you can either connect with a tutor one-on-one -on -one virtually uh, during a synchronous appointment to chat about your paper, or you can simply upload your paper for an asynchronous appointment and get some written feedback from a tutor. We have support for both undergraduate and graduate students, as well as open learning students through RightAway and PLAR support. When it comes to our resources, I really encourage you to check out our website. We have a lot of resources on writing, on grammar, citation, and if you prefer watching a video, we have a lot of those as well. I encourage you to come check us out in Old Main 1411. We'll be open Monday to Friday, 10 to 2, for face-to-face -face questions and to help you book an appointment. We're a safe and inclusive environment. We also provide support for faculty. Something I really encourage students to do is to book with a specific tutor if they're looking for specific help. Because sometimes I'll you know, chat with students and they say, well, I booked with a tutor and I really wanted some help understanding this Chicago citation style. And not every tutor is an expert in Chicago. All of our tutors, uh, can help you with any kind of general academic writing question that you have. But if you're looking for more specific support, check out our tutor profiles either in front of the Writing Center in Old Main 1411 or go online and you'll see what their background is, their major and minor, and their specialties. So you can book a little bit more strategically. It's always important to clarify to students what we can help you with in the Writing Center and what we don't do, because sometimes there is a misconception that we are simply an editing shop, which we are not. We like to teach about writing so you can improve your own skills. We can help at any stage in the writing process, whether you have your assignment and you just don't know where to begin, so we can help you plan and brainstorm. We can help you at any stage as you're writing your draft. We can help you find resources and cite your sources according to a certain citation style. If you're giving a presentation, we can even help with that. You can come in and practice your presentation for a tutor and we can give you some critical feedback. If you have a group project, bring in your entire group and we can help facilitate that process. But again, we're really trying to help you become a better writer. 
So we can't fix all your mistakes in your paper, um, and we can't make your D paper an A paper. We'd get into a lot of trouble with that. When it comes to academic writing, there are a few things I'd like you to consider. First, academic writing is discipline specific. So the lab report that you write for your biology class is gonna look a lot different from the narrative essay that you write in your English class, for example. Second, academic writing is culturally specific. So what constitutes good academic writing in a North American post-secondary institution might look different in other languages and other cultures. I think that some students fear that there's this expectation that they should already know how to write an academic paper when they come to university. Academic writing is a process and it's a learned process. So adopt a growth mindset and realize that you can develop your writing habits to become a better writer. So when it comes to academic writing in this cultural context, it has a very linear structure. You might have been introduced to the five paragraph essay in high school. So starting with your introduction, followed by three body paragraphs and ending with a conclusion. I want you to let that go because although it's a great start and there are some elements that you'll still see in university writing, it doesn't always look like that. Two, your argument is well supported, often through research and certainly citing those resources appropriately. Academic writing is concise, to the point, and very clear. Your reader should really easily recognize your main points and should be able to pick out your thesis statement easily as well. I'll chat a little bit more about thesis statements on the next slides. Academic writing at TRU is very logical and I'll chat a little bit more about unity and coherence and what those mean. Finally, the responsibility is on the writer to be understood rather than on the reader to understand and make sense of your writing. When it comes to the academic writing process, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but it should follow similar steps. I encourage students to book a few appointments with the Writing Center when they receive their assignment from their instructor, and that might help keep you accountable so that you're not writing your paper the night before. So if you book two or three appointments, you can get help in the early stages of writing, uh, as well as the later stages. So getting help with making sure your arguments are structurally sound, um, that you cited all your sources appropriately. So the next step is determining your purpose, and this will help you decide what kind of paper you're writing and how it should be structured. I then encourage students to pre-write or brainstorm. And this is when you grab a piece of paper and get all of your ideas about your topic down. At this point, you're not concerned with grammar or sentence structure. The next step is highlighted because this one can change in terms of where it happens. So you might not be writing a research essay at all, so you might not even need this step. But often university writing does involve research. So sometimes students ask me, when should I start the research process? At the very beginning, a little bit further along in the process? And it really depends on your understanding of the topic. So sometimes you might not know anything about your topic. So then I encourage students to start the research a little bit earlier. Go to the library, connect with the librarian, and find out a little bit more about your topic so then you can decide what kind of paper you're going to write. However, if you already know a little bit about your topic, you might want to pre-write and brainstorm and get a sense of what you're gonna write about first before you engage in your research, because then your research is a little bit more narrow in its focus. You should always, always create an outline. This really helps with keeping your ideas clear and flowing in a logical way. The next step is writing your first draft. And notice that I emphasize first because sometimes students write a first draft and then hand that in, but it's always quite obvious when they haven't taken the time to revise and polish. There are a few steps to help you navigate this academic writing process because it can be a little bit overwhelming. Always ask for frequent feedback. Again, get over that fear that you should already know all the answers. You're a student and that's why you're at university. So ask your instructor or a tutor or a friend for frequent feedback on your writing because then you'll be able to understand what you're doing well 
and the areas that you should be working on. It's always great also to ask your instructor for some non-examples, so, you know, what shouldn't I be doing, as well as examples of what a good research paper looks like. Not for you to copy, certainly, but for you to get a sense of what good academic writing looks like if you have some questions around it. A great tip is to create a personal academic writing checklist based on what you're working on. So for example, if you look to my academic writing checklist on the right hand side, um, maybe I have a habit of not reading the assignment thoroughly and missing some important pieces and then losing marks on those. So on my personal academic writing checklist, I will emphasize that I have read the assignment instructions thoroughly. I'll assign myself a due date to hold myself accountable and again, hopefully not write that paper the night before, and then I'll check it off when it's complete. Maybe I have struggled in the past with making my thesis statements clear. So again, that's going to be on my own personal writing checklist and check it off when it's complete. This will really improve your writing. Again, remember that writing is developmental and that you're always going to be working on things, but you're always going to be improving as well. And finally, academic integrity and avoiding plagiarism is really important at TRU. And again, it might look really different at other institutions uh, or in other cultures. So understanding what it looks like at TRU is imperative. And you can check out my videos on academic integrity and APA citation if you like. It's so interesting. So when I take a look at the kinds of appointments that students book in the Writing Center, uh, I'm not surprised to see that number one is always for grammar help, but number two is around assignment interpretation. So sometimes you'll get an assignment and you have that panicky feeling like, I don't know how to address this or I don't know how to begin. So your first step should be read it through several times and then go back with a highlighter and emphasize the important terms and any action items you'll need to take care of. Then clarify any terms or language that is unclear. And again, you can ask a tutor or ask your instructor for clarification. The last slide I talked about creating a personal writing checklist, but it's also a good idea to create a separate checklist for each assignment. And again, especially if it's one of those really in-depth assignments where you have to meet many points, Create that checklist with all of the action items that you'll need to hit and then check them off as they're complete. There's nothing worse than kind of putting a lot of effort into your essay and getting it back and realizing, oh my gosh, I missed out on some marks simply because I didn't read the assignment thoroughly or I missed some important pieces. So here's an example of that assignment specific checklist you might want to create. And this is an example from a nursing class where their assignment number one was a reflexive analysis. So it was a really kind of complicated and in-depth assignment where the instructor wanted a lot of things. So breaking that assignment down into manageable steps, for example, looking at language and explanations, uh, looking at if the experience was connected to the course learning goals, that means that you are understanding the assignment and all the expectations really thoroughly and that you've checked it off at the end and you know that you've hit all those points. Your next step in the academic writing process will be to determine your purpose because that informs the structure of your essay. So for example, are you creating an argument? And an argument is your basic research paper. You're trying to convince your reader of something and backing it up um, with informed sources. Are you analyzing information? An analysis means that you're breaking something apart and looking at the pieces. Or are you summarizing information? where you are taking a lot of information and condensing it in your own words. You might be writing a critique, and we critique things like literature or movies or sometimes food, uh, and it's when you're making a judgment based on your in-depth critical analysis of something. Are you writing a narrative, so basically telling a story? Are you exploring the connection between cause and effect? Or are you simply writing a description? So again, be really clear about your purpose before you start writing, because your structure depends on that purpose. 
When it comes to structuring your academic paper, again, keep in mind that it's going to look different depending on your course and depending on the assignment. So really important to have that full understanding of the assignment before you move on to the structure. Tip number one is clarify your structure before you start writing. And tip number two is visit the Writing Center for templates and resources. Again, all of our resources are on our website. So I encourage you to check out the different kinds of templates that we have. Maybe you are writing a literature review for the first time. We have a template for that. Maybe you're writing a summary or a critical analysis. Again, these look different and a template is a really good starting point. When it comes to your basic research paper, often we start with an introduction. And in an introduction, you will include the background or contextual information that your reader needs to understand what you'll be writing about. We typically move from general statements to specific statements, with your most specific statement being your thesis statement. You might have heard of a hook statement, and that is sometimes a fact, um, or an interesting story that encourages your reader to keep reading. Again, as a student, you're probably writing your research paper for marks and your instructor has to read it anyway, but it's a way of making the academic writing process a little bit more creative. I often hear from students that they really struggle with constructing their thesis statements. So I'll chat a little bit more about that on the next slide. So a few points about thesis statements. It should be specific. It should clearly state both your topic and your position on that topic. It also might include some of the main points that you'll touch on in your essay. Make sure that your thesis statement is limiting, so don't bring up any extraneous information that you're not going to be discussing. It should be arguable. So for example, it should never be a fact and it definitely should never be a question. A fact or a question might be a really great hook statement at the beginning of your introduction, but it should never be included in your thesis statement. And it should be concise. You should be able to cover your topic and your position on the topic in one or two sentences. Academic writing in this cultural context should have unity and coherence. So what are those? Um, I really like food metaphors, typically hamburger ones. Um, so when it comes to unity, I always tell my students, don't put the cat in the hamburger. Unity refers to the idea that each paragraph should only talk about one topic. Any other information that is outside of that topic belongs in another paragraph. When it comes to coherence, this is the idea that your ideas flow in a logical sequence. So again, with the food metaphor, how do you build the perfect hamburger? Okay, you have the bun on the outside, you have the meat on top of the bun, the cheese obviously goes on the meat so that it can melt and become even more delicious, and then the toppings go on top of that because they're toppings. You don't just randomly put those pieces together because it will be sloppy and it will taste funny and it will fall apart kind of like your argument. So make sure that each paragraph deals with only one topic and make sure that those paragraphs are structured in a logical way that makes sense to the reader. In order to create a strong argument, you should first be familiar with the subject area and that's when your research comes in. After you've discovered a little bit more about your topic, you can find relevant resources that are often peer reviewed. And again, you can ask a writing center tutor or a librarian for help with this. It might also be a good idea to find any counter arguments to your argument, because sometimes you'll need to address those in your paper and refute them. I encourage students to avoid language that is easy to disprove. So words like always or never or continuously because if someone finds one counter example, then your argument no longer stands. When it comes to your conclusion, perhaps the most important point is don't add any new information. You're going to start by restating your thesis statement to clarify it once again for your reader. Restating does not mean copying it word for word. So you're going to say it again, but using different language. In your conclusion, you move from specific comments to more general ones, so the opposite structure of your introduction, starting with your thesis, moving to more general comments. 
I encourage students to put a call to action into their conclusion. It's a great way to end your essay. So the call to action means now that your reader has read this beautifully structured essay, what are they going to do with the information? Or how could this information be applied in a different context? Here are a few academic writing tips for you in terms of things to do and things to avoid. Do understand your assignment. Again, reading that assignment really thoroughly a couple of times will make sure that you're starting off on the right track. Again, don't hesitate to ask your instructor questions as well. Start with that outline. It will really help your ideas flow in a logical way. Always, always check your grammar. Always use transitions because they help your writing have flow. I like to talk about transitions as GPS for your reader because you're indicating where you want their attention to go next. So these are words like first or second, moreover, furthermore, henceforth, if you want to sound super fancy. Yeah, don't use henceforth. Nobody uses henceforth. But the Writing Center has a great resource on different transitions that you can use in your writing. Always clarify and explain your evidence. So if you have put a quote or a paraphrase from another source into your writing, never leave it on its own. Always explain it in your own words. And always get a second pair of eyes on your work, whether it's a friend or a tutor, because somebody else can often catch mistakes that you typically miss in your own writing. When it comes to things you shouldn't do, start with plagiarism. Just don't do it. Don't think your essay needs to follow that basic five paragraph structure that you might have learned in high school. Again, the length of your essay or how many paragraphs are in your body really depends on the scope of your thesis statement. Don't assume your reader knows what you're talking about. Make sure you're being as clear as possible. Don't use long in-text citations to increase your word count. It is really obvious to your teacher when you are doing that. Don't use rhetorical questions or informal language. This is an academic paper, so your writing should be formal. And don't start your essay the night before. I'm going to share some resources that are available in the Writing Center. And again, this is definitely not an exhaustive list. This is just a sample of what we have. We have a lot of citation resources, so around APA, MLA, CSE, Chicago. Probably any style that you encounter in university will have something that supports your understanding of it. We have a lot of resources around giving presentations because presentations also involve academic writing. So oral presentation tips or dealing with that anxiety, creating an academic poster are just a few. We have a lot of graduate specific resources as well. So addressing some of those assignments that you'll probably see as a graduate writer. If you're a business student, we have a lot of resources around case studies or writing formal business emails, um, business letters. So again, a lot of assignments that you see as a business student, we probably have a corresponding resource in the Writing Center. And we have lots around study skills as well. So academic reading, note taking, study strategies. Again, come visit us in the Writing Center, Old Main 1411, or check out our website. I always like to end my presentations with a quote, and I love this quote from Ernest Hemingway. There is nothing to writing. All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. So most of us are probably not sitting at a typewriter, but we're probably sometimes feeling like we are bleeding over our laptops. Academic writing is challenging, but there are so many supports available to you. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out my other presentations on academic writing and study skills.